Well, hello. Today we're talking about motorcycle crash statistics. Not so much the old, do motorcycles crash and are they dangerous talk, but, you know, who's crashing them and why are you making us look so bad? So I just kind of find this stuff interesting because, frankly, I don't like to be a statistic myself. You know, I don't like hospital bills and, well, pain's not really that fun anyways. But the more you know about this stuff, the more likely you can avoid becoming one of those statistics. So let's look at some numbers gathered by the Institute of Highway Safety, rather, I think it's the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, but yeah, they've got a lot of good data from the DOT they've collected on who's crashing their bikes and what time of day, were they drunk, fun stuff. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so going over these statistics, um, all this data was collected in 2021, as we can see right here, um, posted in May of 23, so it's recent data, it's just, you know, we're not going to keep up to date with everything that's happening when it's happening. It takes time to make these spreadsheets, right? Um, but what we learned from this one is that motorcycles are 24 times more likely to have a crash per mile than passenger cars. So we already kind of know that as well. Motorcycles crash more often and more dangerous. Um, of this though, was a fun fact that, so all the way down here, 38% um, of these crashes were on unlicensed drivers. These are motorcycle riders who are just hopping on their motorcycles and just crashing. That's almost half of them. Have no idea what they're doing, they're just, uh, well, we can say they don't know what they're doing, but we don't really know what the circumstances are. Maybe you just don't want to get your license. I don't know. Anyways, 38%. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, moving on down. You know, here we talk about, so we had a total of 6,084 crashes on motorcycles in 2021. That's the highest number and a 21% increase. And as, of course, we know, 2021, that was COVID times. Everyone was going out to ride a motorcycle because it was something that you could actually get outside and do. Um, so motorcycle deaths accounted for 14% of all traffic fatalities in 2021. Uh, triple the number of 97. I found that those numbers don't really go up that high, though. Um, like this, this, this right here is showing you what has happened over the years, over you know, 30 years of data here. More than that, actually. I, my math is terrible. Anyways, you see that the the numbers haven't gone up significantly. They actually kind of go up and down a little bit. But you know, they've stayed pretty steady, considering how many more people are on the roads these days. So here we have 38% of all motorcycle deaths in 2021. They were single vehicle crashes versus 62% who were in multiple vehicle crashes. Well, I'm only assuming what that means, uh, that you know, obviously 62% of people are, uh, I'm guessing that 38% of the time people are just hitting the ditch. The rest of the time you're, you're getting rear-ended and crashed into somebody else. Whatever's happened in there, that's how I kind of interpret that data. Um, I don't know if there's anything to really take away more than that. Just don't, hit, don't, don't get hit by their cars. Um, so here we have motorcycle deaths by age. Um, this just kind of goes into who's crashing. Kind of depends what you're riding. Uh, most of these deaths are aged over 50. 35% uh, of deaths are over the age of 50. 26% are under the age of 29. Um, obviously, most motorcycle riders are going to be older anyways. Uh, and the guys who are younger, we already know why they're dying when they're young. So not a lot to digest in that information. But yes, that is just how the facts lay out. What I did take away from this, I'm not sure if it's on here or not, but 92% of fatalities are male riders, which of course, that's, that's kind of a, a duh, because most riders are male. 57% um, <clears throat> of those deaths, however, were f female passengers, which makes up 92% of total passenger fatalities. So uh, a lot of people riding two up and the woman on the back just isn't making it. That's kind of just how it plays out. Uh, if you haven't been told before, riding two up is dangerous. I generally choose not to do it for that reason. Uh, of all these fatalities, 60% 60 60 of people were wearing helmets. So just because you're wearing that helmet, that does not mean you're going to survive an accident. That's just the facts. Um, motorcycle types and engine sizes. I don't really find that this is all that helpful because, frankly, uh, most touring types have big motors. Most off-road ones have small motors. Even in the super sport models, most guys are going to have under 1,000 cc's anyways. This is absolutely not useful data to me at all. Um, moving on, though. Here comes the fun fact. Uh, well, I guess for, for when are they dying? Oh, they're dying in the busy riding season. That's June through September. That's, of course, when most guys are out riding. The weather is nice. Uh, least common time to die was February. Um, that's just kind of figures. February's gross. It's cold. Who wants to be out in February? Unless you're in California or somewhere nice. So that's kind of a non-informative piece of information there. Time of death, though, was more important. Um, 
Most deaths happen after 6 o'clock, if I recall. This is after 3. Where did I read that at? That's all wrong. Anyways, between the hours of 3 and midnight, though, is when most people will die um, in these accidents. 54% of them occurred on major roads and highways. Deaths were more likely to occur to in urban rather than rural areas. That's 67% of all crashes are in urban areas. 32% are rural. Alcohol involvement. Um, the, the, the data I have here, where was I written, written that down? It says 29% of all crashes, the riders will have a BAC over 0.08. And 49% after, of crashes after the hours of 9 o'clock to 6 a.m., will have a BAC over 0.08. And so a lot of guys were out riding that night, which they shouldn't be doing anyways, and they're riding drunk. Uh, that's kind of what happens there. Or did I miss that? This was the important part right here. Okay. <clears throat> Who's crashing their bikes and why? So going off of these numbers here, we have a number of total of 5,785 here. While that number doesn't match our total fatalities earlier, I don't know. But anyways, most of these deaths were happening on cruisers. 1,733 cruiser deaths. 1,184 touring deaths, and 1,169 super sport deaths. Off-road guys, they only make it 129. 121, sorry. And that's that's the dual sport and ADV crowd, which I'm in. Um, of course, most of you guys are going to be crashing off-road. We know we're going to be breaking legs. You're going to be breaking clavicles. You're most likely going home with a broken bone, but you're probably going to be alive. Uh, you may not ever ride again, but y you will be alive. That's, this is kind of how the statistics play out. Uh, super sport guys, everyone knows why they're crashing. Of course, they think it's a race. Eventually, you make one mistake, and that's all it takes. Um, touring and cruising guys, I just happen to assume that that's experience, lack of it, and then alcohol. But that's just a wild guess. I have no idea. Anyways, they do make up the majority of the crashes. Um, so, yeah, anyways... What do we make of all this data? I have no idea, but just so you know, what I've taken away from it, we don't ride at nighttime, uh, we don't ride drunk, uh, and staying on rural roads, you're more likely to avoid an accident. That's that's kind of what I take away from this. Uh, the statistic on here, I think I got 54% of major non-interstate roads are where these accidents occurred, 54%, 67% are urban, and 32% are rural, and so... That suggests that you're more likely to have a crash on something like a main avenue. Let's think of like a four-lane boulevard, lots of stoplights, lots of action, lots of cars. That's where most of the accidents happen. There's a lot going on. Uh, it's not happening on freeways necessarily, but it's happening on those busy, busy boulevards. And that's where there's just too many cars and you're just not visible enough. That's all I take away from it. Um, so all I can say is ride safe and keep it shiny side up. Did I get that right?